everyone. I think in the last 10 years, you have noticed the increase in the number of abnormally hot days in the northern hemisphere and also storms and hurricanes. All of these occurrences are the result of warming of our planet caused by greenhouse gases. In this video, I am going to talk to you about such a flammable greenhouse gas as methane, which has the capacity to soon affect the lives of all people on our planet. While the world is a mess now, I decided to chill out a bit and visit the remote island of Prangli, which is located 15 kilometers off the north coast of Estonia. The nature of this island is quite beautiful. Another peculiarity of this island is that this island is home to the only natural gas field in Estonia. In the 1960s, Soviet scientists even drilled an extension well here. However, natural gas reserves happen to be very major here and were not enough even to meet the needs of this island. That is why the well was abandoned and soon became a local tourist attraction. You can easily boil water over the flames of the common gas and even cook food. Fortunately, tourists visiting this spot have left dishes here, which no one takes away. After spending a sufficient amount of time enjoying this place and drinking some tea, I had to put up flame in order not to cause a wildfire. On my way back home, I recalled that natural gas mainly consists of pure methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas. If this well is not set on fire, every day it will be releasing about 4 cubic meters of methane into the atmosphere, which is not going to benefit our planet. After having such truths, I decided to learn more about this gas, how it is obtained and check its notorious greenhouse properties. A couple days later, I bought everything I needed for extracting methane and running experiments with it. Since there is no gas supply in my house, I am going to synthesize this gas from the chemicals we are familiar with, which are baking soda, vinegar and some alkali. To begin with, we need to mix baking soda with vinegar. I used half a liter of 30% vinegar solution and 200 grams of baking soda. When these two chemicals start reacting with each other, they form sodium acetate, which is a sodium salt of acetic acid, and also some carbon dioxide is released. This time, the solution starts cooling off and growing weaker because of releasing CO2 gas. In order for the reaction to reach the final stage, I put the beaker into hot water and waited half an hour more. When all gas has been released, there formed a sodium acetate solution in the beaker. But now it is not suitable for extracting methane because it retains too much water. To remove it, I am vaporizing the excess moisture from the solution until they start forming crystals on the edges of the pot. Now there have formed so-called oversaturated sodium acetate solution. It can be used to run an interesting experiment before using it for extracting methane. The experiment is called hot ice. I have poured the solution into a plastic bottle and put it into cold water for the solution to cool off. After cooling to the room temperature, I am just pouring the solution into a glass bowl. Because there were a few dust particles in the bowl, they became the centers of crystallization around which sodium acetate crystallized and there grew beautiful crystals from the solution. The process of crystallization is so fast that if you work with this material for a while, you can learn how to create sculptures from salt. After crystallization, there forms so-called sodium acetate crystal hydrate. In other words, each molecule of sodium acetate in these crystals is linked to three molecules of water. This water will hinder extraction of methane, and that is why it needs to be removed. I am going to bake crystals in an oven and 150 degrees Celsius. An hour later, water evaporated, turning the crystals into such flakes, but there is still a little liquid in the bottom, and it needs to be removed. After baking for two more hours in the oven, all the water evaporated, and I got practically 
pure dry sodium acetate which can be used to extract methane. The process of extracting methane is quite simple. We need to mix one part of sodium acetate to two parts of sodium hydroxide. I am using 40 grams of dry sodium acetate and 80 grams of alkali, which is sodium hydroxide. To start the reaction, I just need to heat up the mixture in the test tube with the help of a powerful burner at 400 degrees Celsius. After that, both agents start melting together and releasing methane. This experiment is also called the Dumas reaction. To purify the freshly extracted gas, I am passing it through water, which traps remains of sodium hydroxide and water vapor. After some time, I can ignite the releasing methane, but because of interrupt releasing from this system, the flame would always flicker and was unstable. That is why I decided to collect methane using a regular balloon. After running the reaction for half an hour, I extracted about a liter of this flammable gas. Now I can run a couple of experiments with it. First of all, we can compare burning of this gas with burning butane for refilling lighters. To do that, I am preparing a small amount of such methane soap bubbles. When they are set on fire, methane burns out quickly and without soot. These experiments can even be conducted on the wet hand, because basically there is not enough time for the quickly burning methane to burn the skin. If we take a small amount of butane soap bubbles and set them on fire, they will be burning slower and leave soot because butane is heavier than air and having a long carbon chain. Because of containing liter carbon, the extracted methane burns almost without forming soot, which is why it is more environmentally friendly fuel than other hydrocarbons, which when burning release several times more carbon dioxide than burning methane. Because of that, even now, Many power stations are switching from coal to a more environmentally friendly fuel, which is natural gas, which is mainly consists of methane. Another difference between this gas and other hydrocarbon gases is that methane doesn't liquefy when the pressure increases. For instance, if you apply three times the atmospheric pressure to butane at the room temperature, it will immediately reach the dew point and turn into a liquid. Methane is different through. No matter how much you increase the pressure under normal conditions, it will never turn into a liquid. To liquefy methane, you also need to lower the temperature. That is why methane, or to be more precise, natural gas, is transported only in a liquid state at minus 165 degrees Celsius in a huge vacuum tanks or ships. However, methane does have a very dark side to it, which is the fact that it is a notorious greenhouse gas. Its warming potential is 25 times that of carbon dioxide. To demonstrate its greenhouse properties, I have prepared several bottles with different contents. The first bottle is filled with regular dry air, the second one is filled with methane. I have placed two bottles on the sunlight with thermometers attached to them, which show the temperatures of the contents inside the bottles. In my first experiment, I placed one bottle filled with air and another one filled with methane. Now we can observe how hot the gases inside each of the bottles will get. Since I placed the bottle filled with air in the sunlight, a bit earlier it was already heated up whereas the bottle filled with methane is remaining cooler. As time passed, the bottle filled with methane was rapidly heating up and eventually it was even 1 degree hotter than the bottle with air. This means that methane inside the bottle absorbs a wider range of infrared light than air, which consists of nitrogen, oxygen and 1% of other gases. This happens due to the fact that greenhouse gas molecules such as carbon dioxide or methane can vibrate when absorbing infrared light. By this way, because of having more connections inside its molecules, 
methane 25 times more potent greenhouse gas than the well-known carbon dioxide. A similar thing happens in the Earth's atmosphere, which is why our atmosphere heats up faster than it has done before the Industrial Revolution. Many landfills where organic matter decomposes are the sources of methane, which is released into the atmosphere. The main sources of methane emissions in the atmosphere is extraction of petroleum and animal breeding. Speaking of the impact of this gas on our planet, in the coming years methane pollution will only be increasing, thus heating up our atmosphere even more, along with other greenhouse gases. Along with that, because of the abnormally hot weather in the recent time, the Arctic permafrost, containing vestiges of frozen ancient plants and animals, has been melting. In warm weather, all this biomass actively decomposes, releasing methane and facilitating climate change even more. That is why, in my opinion, we should not expect positive changes in the future. Climate change will be speeding up, and we will experience abnormal storms and droughts, which will be getting more severe. So I think that video was useful for you, and if you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and also support my channel on Patreon.